Avid Pro Tools, the world's standard digital audio workstation, is used by professional post-production sound mixers, film composers, and recording artists to create post-production sound and to compose and record music. The last time I looked at Pro Tools was version 11. Since then, the software has been upgraded and enhanced, with Pro Tools 12.3 having been released last November and version 12.4 released a few weeks ago. In this video, I'll catch up on Pro Tools 12 in general and then focus on the new features and enhancements in version 12.3 and 12.4. Pro Tools 12 was announced early last year along with Pro Tools First, a free but capable version of Pro Tools available to beginning musicians and mixers. On the professional side, Pro Tools 12 introduced new flexible licensing options which allows you to buy and own the software outright, the same way you've always done. But now you have the ability to purchase a monthly or a yearly subscription to the software. Avid Pro Tools 12 also announced cloud collaboration, which enables groups of people to work together, regardless of location, on projects stored on a centralized media platform. It's part of their Avid Everywhere vision and will offer ways for mixers, musicians, and producers to collaborate with each other through a global media network, as well as market their skills and creations on the Avid marketplace. Version 12 of the software also offered improved I.O. setup, unlimited buses, and in-app plug-in purchases and rentals. Pro Tools 12.2 saw enhancements such as the addition of VCA masters, which are a better way to control a group of tracks with one master control track, a feature previously available in Pro Tools HD only. With VCA, you can adjust a bunch of tracks together as a group while still having the ability to adjust the level of each track individually without having to ungroup it all first. Disk Cache was also introduced in Pro Tools 12.2. Sometimes with large Pro Tools sessions, a sluggish hard drive can cause playback errors. With Disk Cache, Pro Tools can take your entire session and load it into RAM, which provides much better performance. Disk Cache is an important new feature since you naturally want to minimize any pauses or interruptions during the creative process. Avid Pro Tools 12.2 also included advanced metering options with 17 different meter types as well as the ability to display gain reduction for each track. You can choose to display the gain reduction for compressors and limiters or expanders and gates as well as the sum of all compressors and expanders. This is a feature found in high-end mixing consoles and is something that professional audio engineers will appreciate. You can also choose to view the gain reduction for each individual plugin assigned to a track. The release of Pro Tools 12.3 introduced more new and exciting enhancements and features, including the new commit function. With it, you can render out audio or MIDI to a separate track without having to go through a bunch of steps to do it like you had to in previous versions of Pro Tools by having to bounce it to disk first and re-import it back into the session. There are a lot of reasons why you might want to render a track out to another audio track. One reason is to free up resources on your computer. For example, suppose you have a track to which you have applied a lot of processor-intensive plugins, such as compression, EQ, delay, chorus, or guitar effects. Lots of processing can slow down the responsiveness of the program and its ability to play back smoothly, especially if it is a large session with many tracks. By using the commit function, you can burn in all the effects applied to a track into a new track with a resulting waveform that sounds like the original track, but without the processing overhead. Another reason to use the commit function is so you can give someone a version of the session to work on without having to worry whether they have the same plugins that you use. When committing a track, 
a dialog box pops up that presents several options to choose from. You can choose whether you want to commit the entire track or just the selected region. You can also decide whether you want to render volume and pan information and whether to copy sends and group assignments. In addition, there are options that allow you to decide what to do with the original track. Leave it alone, make it inactive, hide it, or delete it, which is a good option if you are sure you are done with it. Though you might want to keep it around in case you ever need to change something and recommit it later. If you have an audio track that has multiple cuts and edits, using the commit command on it will consolidate all the regions on the new track into one. If you like, you can later use the strip silence command to separate the audio into different regions automatically. Incidentally, you can also use commit for multiple tracks at once or to bounce the whole mix down to a rendered track. A nice feature that I really like about the new commit function is that you don't have to render every insert on the track. You can use it to render the track up to a certain point by using the commit until this insert command. Whatever plugins remain after that are simply applied to the new track. In this way you can render some of the inserts into the new track and simply apply the rest of them. Commit works not only with audio, but with virtual instrument tracks, and you can simply drag a MIDI region, or multiple MIDI regions, into an audio track beneath it to render it. This is handy if you plan to send your project to someone who might not have the virtual instruments you do. It's also useful for archiving. Besides working on mono and stereo tracks, Commit also works on tracks with multiple outputs. For example, you might be using a virtual instrument such as a drum plugin that has separate outputs for the kick, snare, toms, hi-hats, and cymbals. In this case, Commit can render each output to a separate audio track for those who wish to have precise control when mixing drums. There's another new function in Pro Tools 12.3 called Track Bounce, which allows you to bounce tracks to disk, a useful thing to do if you want to hand off your tracks for mastering. If you use subgroup aux tracks, then you can render out stem files for delivery. Just select all the aux track submasters, then choose what format, sample rate, and bit depth you want in the dialog box, as well as where you want to save them. You can also choose to create MP3 files at the same time. Also new in Pro Tools 12.3 were batch fades, which allow precise control of fade-ins, fade-outs, and cross-fades. You can adjust the shape of the fade simply by pulling on the representation of its curve, as well as set the length and placement of the fades, pre-sliced, post-sliced, or centered. Version 12.3 also contained clip transparency, a useful new enhancement that allows you to see through a region when moving it somewhere else. This is handy in order to see the shape of a waveform that lies under the one you are moving, making it easier to match things up. Hot on the heels of version 12.3 came version 12.4, which contained further enhancements to Pro Tools such as Track Freeze, a feature that is similar to the Commit function with some major differences. While Commit permanently renders the audio of one track into a new track, Freeze renders the audio to the same track, locks it, and puts a diagonal pattern over it to indicate that it is frozen. The benefit of freezing a track is that you can always unfreeze it later if you need to change something and then freeze it again when you are done. Freezing tracks, like Commit, is great for quickly freeing up DSP resources with the ability to revert the track at any time. On the other hand, Commit is useful if you plan to edit the waveform or if you wish to hand off your project to someone else to work on without worrying about compatibility issues. Instrument tracks can also be frozen and will display both the audio waveform as well as its MIDI notes in a transparent state. However, you'll have to unfreeze it to edit the MIDI. With multi-output virtual instruments such as drum kits, you can easily freeze all of the outputs in one step. Pro Tools 12.3 and 12.4 added some very important and useful upgrades to Pro Tools 12. Disk Cache, Commit, Track Freezing, and VCA Masters are all useful and productive enhancements that you'll definitely want to have when recording and mixing. 
For more information, visit Avid's website. This is Joe Herman. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please press like and don't forget to subscribe for more videos about production and post-production technology.